My graphic novel, Maker Comics, Draw a Comic, just came out and I want to tell you my step-by-step -step process of how I created the book. Yeah! This is my graphic novel. It's 124 pages about two friends going on an adventure to save a comics library, all while teaching you, the reader, how to create your own comic books. So in this video, I'm going to show you the process I use to create this book, all 124 pages. But if you're looking for more knowledge on how comics are written and drawn, what tools to use, how to assemble books into actual comics, may I suggest picking up a copy of this book. It takes you through creating a basic three panel comic strip all the way up to printing and making multiple copies of your very own comic book. It's got tons of tips and tricks and all that good stuff. A lot more than what I can cover in a video like this. Obviously, I'm super proud of the work I put into this book and it would mean a lot if you checked it out. You can get copies from my website and I'll do a personalized drawing if you order it directly from me. The link to that is down in the description below. All right, thank you for bearing with me on that. Now let's get into the step-by-step -step on how I created this graphic novel. Step one is the idea. So it all starts with me sitting here in my reading chair, having all these ideas about what this book is going to be. And at this scale, you know, 124 pages, that's a lot of comics. It's, it's too much to fit in one head. You know, I got overwhelmed super quickly. So I realized I had to start very small. So I started thinking about writing and drawing this graphic novel like I'm building a Lego castle. I'm just gonna lay down one Lego on top of another until eventually I've laid all these Legos down and I have an awesome castle. So that very first brick is your idea. And if I was gonna start super small, I'm just gonna grab one sheet of paper and a pen and I'm gonna write down one sentence of what this book is about. Two friends, save a comics library with the help of a bunch of comics experts who teach you, the reader, how to make your own comic books. So this might seem like a simple, really easy step, but it is that first brick to get you started in the journey to building this castle, to writing and drawing this graphic novel. And now that I've got an idea of what this book is gonna be about, you know, I've got some ideas of what the characters are gonna be, I've got a loose idea of what the story is. It's time to move on to step two, writing an outline. All right, so if we're sticking with this Lego castle metaphor, now it's time to start building the foundation of the castle. Time to start writing an outline. When I say outline, you might think of, you know, a big long list of indentations and bullet points and all that stuff, and we'll get there eventually. But remember, I had to start super basic. So I knew this book was gonna be broken down into projects, starting with a comic strip, a few others in between leading up to creating and printing your own comic book. So I went ahead and made a list of the chapters based on those projects. Super simple, just one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And then after that, I started layering in the plot points. So chapter one is kind of the intro. They start in the library. Chapter two is the comic strip. Now I know my book is a little bit different, so if you're writing a more traditional narrative style story, there's three things you really gotta think about when you start making your list of how the book is gonna be divided up. The first is plot. That's just what happens moment to moment. Usually that is things that happen to the characters. So the second thing is characters. When the plot happens to the characters, how do they feel? That's a good thing to start thinking about when you're making these lists. And then the last thing is location. So my book, each section, the characters are moving from location to location. So, you know, it's, it's your setting. Making sure you write all that down will be super helpful as well. So once I have my very simple list, then I started over and added a little bit more of those details in. Things like the plot points and the characters' feelings and the different locations. I'm gonna do this four, five, six more times. Just keep on adding in details, revising and changing things where I need to. And then eventually I jump on the computer and start typing everything out. So after lots of rework, moving things around, adding, deleting, imagining, writing, I have a solid outline of the book. 
And now that I have a solid castle foundation laid out, it's time to move on to step three, writing a script. All right, I know a lot of cartoonists that write and draw their stuff at the same time. You know, it's comics, so when they're planning stuff out, the words and pictures go together. That's how they figure all this stuff out. But for me, that's too much for my little brain to handle, so I gotta start with just the words. Plus, for me, it's much faster to just write out some words describing what a drawing would be than to actually take the time to do the drawing. So that's why I'm still in full-on writing, typing, word mode only. Again, when you hear the word script, you're probably thinking like a movie script, this crazy format that has action and camera shots and dialogue and this very specific way of writing stuff out. I don't mess with any of that. I gotta keep it simple. One brick at a time. So all I'm doing is writing a little paragraph describing the action that's taking place in the scene and then below that I just start cranking out dialogue. So I'm sitting there with my outline that's broken into chapters and I just take one chapter at a time as quickly as possible try to get that chapter written out. Just go like crazy. I don't worry about if it's good or not. I just write each scene's action and the dialogue as quickly as I can. You can see that I just abbreviate names. I just do the first letter of a name and then write the dialogue, hit enter when it's the next person's turn to talk and just keep going. The idea is to get this stuff down as quickly as possible. Once I've knocked out the script for each of the chapters, then I go back and start revising, changing things around, making sure everything makes sense. Print it out, take notes, write on the, the paper, cross stuff out, bracket stuff, draw an arrow to move it up there, just make notes all over the place. The important thing to remember is that as long as it makes sense to you, you can be as scratchy and messy as you want, which you will see a lot of in the coming steps. So this is a good point to say that you're building and editing, you know, you're, you're building up the northern tower of the castle just to realize, oh, I don't want a tower there, it's, I gotta move it to the southern part. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to stick with this Lego castle reference. I, I, we'll see how far it goes. The whole point is that by doing it super quickly and having it just be a list of dialogue on the computer, you can move stuff around, delete really easily. So I did four versions of this completed script. The story changed a ton while I was working on this stuff. You know, it started out as this crazy Indiana Jones adventure where the two characters venture through the forest and the swamp up a mountain into this secret hidden temple shrine thing. And while that would have been really cool to draw, it never gelled with how I was trying to teach these ideas about making comics. You know, so it took four revisions to morph into this story about a town filled with people that love comics and, you know, the main character's adventure through the town, learning new things at each stop along the way. So all that's to say that eventually you'll end up with a script where everything feels right. You'll be able to read it and clearly imagine the story in your head. And once that's done, it's time to start drawing. We're moving on to step four, figuring out what the characters look like. So I'm about to start getting heavy into the drawing and I gotta figure out what the characters and the setting is gonna look like. So I grab one of my sketchbooks, just start going to town, drawing characters, places, filling up pages, making sure everything looks cool. I don't know, you've probably already done this step. It's the fun part, so moving on. Step five, time to make some thumbnails. Now it's time to start breaking up this script into panels and pages. Print out the entire script and then start breaking up the dialogue using little brackets and numbers to label everything. In the margin, I draw little two-page spreads and then start breaking those apart into panels and putting the numbers to the corresponding parts of dialogue into the panels. Sometimes I draw little stick figures in there to show where characters are and indicate a little bit of the visuals, but mostly it's just matching the dialogue from the script into each of the panel by using the little number. Okay, hopefully the visual of this makes sense. Uh, it's a little difficult to explain, but the real idea here is that I'm taking a script, which is just a list of words and dialogue and stuff, and formatting it into 
comics pages. Now, this whole part of the process kind of takes a little bit of practice. And I don't know, maybe this isn't intuitive to you at all, but for me, it's the fastest way of laying out the actual comic pages. So I tend to break up the pages into panels in a couple of different ways. One, if there's a ton of dialogue, that means the panel needs to be bigger. Or two, if there's a lot of visual stuff going on, the panel will usually need to be bigger too. So like if there's an establishing shot with a lot of uh, background stuff going on, I'll make the panel bigger. This is sort of a, a very basic way to look at it and there's a lot of other sort of rules I have for it. You know, like action scenes, you know, it'll be a lot, a lot of small panels to sort of like move things along quicker. There's just tons of rules about how comics read that have you have to consider and so that's why I say this part takes a lot of practice. But the good thing about doing it this way is that you can very quickly learn those rules by breaking down your script into panels. You'll figure out very quickly what's important, what needs to be bigger, smaller to help things read more easily. For me, this is just the fastest way I've found to do this step of the process, figuring out what the actual comic page is gonna look like. Side note, the other thing I really consider a lot is the page turn. So that's why I do two page spreads, because I like to, it's almost like leaving a little cliffhanger at the end of that second page. So when you actually turn the page in the book, there's a little surprise that will sort of keep you going throughout the story. Now, as you can see with all the notes and scribbles and scratches on my script pages, once I've broken everything up, I'm constantly revising and changing things around. You know, this whole process is really meant to be about making things better at each step so you can start very quickly, get your ideas down on paper, and then each step you're, you're revising and changing and making things better and better as you go. So when you get to the end, you have something that's actually good and fun to read. <laughs> so at this point, I've broken the script down, I have all these two page spreads with little numbers and panels and everything, and this is usually when I stop thumbnailing. You know, I can read through these notes and make sense of it all. Uh, I know you're probably looking at this stuff saying like, what is he doing? This is crazy. Like, how can you ever work from this? But because I'm spending the time and doing it, it all makes sense to me. But because I have editors that need to read it and help me revise, this is definitely not good enough. I would never have anybody read this and give me feedback on it. So now it's time to jump over to the computer get into Photoshop and start actually drawing some stuff. So for these thumbnails, I'm just laying out the pages, drawing in panels as quickly as possible, and doing a really rough version of what the book is gonna look like. I probably could have gotten away with doing more stick figure type stuff, but because there were gonna be multiple people reading it, I wanted to take it a little bit further, and right now it's just sketchy, very first pass drawing. You know, I'm just copying and pasting all of the dialogue straight from the script onto the Photoshop file, as efficiently as possible, getting the crazy little two-page spreads from earlier into actual legible form. And of course, this took a very long time. It's a lot of drawing, right? It's 120-something pages of drawing. But if you just take one chapter at a time, or even split it up further and just say, I'm gonna do a couple pages at a time, you know, brick by brick, you'll start with just one brick, and then two, and then three, and before you know it, you have a huge wall of your castle built. So yeah, once the entire book is done and thumbnailed, I send it to the editors, they read through it, give me notes, I print it off and do the same thing I've been doing for each step. Take notes, make revisions, you can see all my little scribbles in red all over the, the pages. And with each pass, the story is just gonna get better and better as you go along. And now, with these thumbnails complete, you know, you can read the entire book. It began to feel like I was really, really getting somewhere. So it's time to move on to step six, penciling. So this book was drawn completely on the computer. 
using Photoshop and my Wacom Cintiq Pro 16, this little magical device that I can draw straight on this monitor. And I'm calling this Step Pencils because even though I'm doing it digitally, I'm still treating the process like I would if, if I was doing it more traditionally with an actual pencil. So just because I'm doing this in Photoshop doesn't mean it can't be done with a pencil and a piece of paper. That's still how I make my Simple Routines comics and have made plenty of comics in the past that way. It's just for this book, because I have a deadline and there's so much of it to do, it was much faster for me to use Photoshop and the computer. You know, I can edit type super easily, copy paste, scale, flip, move things around, undo, all that stuff super easy with the computer. So really all this step is, is just refining the thumbnails. I'm actually drawing the characters and the backgrounds, getting all the word balloons figured out. This is like the actual drawing of the comic happening right here. This is also the stage where I'm making the final edits of the book. So after this, I don't wanna be redrawing and moving big chunks of the story around. We're getting to the point where the book is pretty much locked into what it's gonna be. And again, I'm just taking this one page at a time, brick by brick, slowly building it up. And eventually we'll have a version of the book that looks pretty good. Looks almost like it's gonna look in the end. But of course, we gotta print it out one more time, do one more round of notes and revisions to make it even better. And then we move on to step seven, inking. So this step is all about making the art finalized. It's time to clean up the line art. So in Photoshop, I just reduce the opacity of the pencils, make them a light gray, and then I get my 10 pixel wide, simple round brush. And on a new layer, I just start going over the pencils and making the line art super clean and crisp. So while I was penciling, I wasn't worried so much about the quality of the line art or making sure everything looked crisp and clean. It was more about getting the proportions of the characters right and making sure they looked good on top of the backgrounds. Everything fit in the panels nicely. Now I can switch my brain over into thinking about getting those nice clean lines and making everything look just right. So yeah, at this point I am just focused on getting through all the artwork page by page, brick by brick. And really this is the first step of the final artwork. So up to this point, everything I've done is will not actually be seen by the reader. But these inks, this line work, is gonna be in the final book. So that means at this point, there's really no more visual edits. I'm locked in and it is full on finish the book mode. So I'm going page by page, brick by brick, and eventually the line art, the inks are finished. And it's time to move on to step eight, color. All right, for this book, I made this CMYK palette. It's basically just a mixture of even percentages of cyan, magenta, yellow, and no black because we don't want dark, muddy colors. This book has got to be bright and fun. If this is something you're interested in knowing more about, like the actual specifics of coloring comics for print, I can do a whole video about it. It seems super daunting and complicated at first, but it's really not that bad. And doing this book, I have another method of getting it done really quickly and efficiently using actions and stuff. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see a video about coloring comics. Anyway, using this palette, I started flatting pages. That just means laying in flat color and all the spaces where color is going to go. And because this book is very location based, I decided that each location was going to have its own sort of color feel. So I flatted the first couple of pages in each location and then because I was on a deadline and my wife is the greatest person on the planet, I handed over the files to her and she, eyedropper, paint bucket, filled and flatted all of the remaining pages for me. She absolutely saved my life. I wouldn't have met my deadline without her. And honestly, she gave me a lot of extra time to make the book even better. All right, the final coloring step for me, while JC was flatting all of the pages, I was, taking them and adding a multiply layer of shadow. I use this dark bluish purple color and uh, a dark maroon 
for all of the shadows set to 40% and multiply. Of course, I made sure to keep all of the layers separate so if there were any more art edits I had to make, it was easy just to take care of it as quickly as possible and not have to redo any part that I didn't need to because layers were merged together. And really the whole color part of the process, if if we're building a Lego castle, think of it as putting the flags on the towers and the banners on the walls and all the cool looking stuff to really make it feel awesome. Page by page, going through, adding all the little details just to make everything look super fun and come to life. And really, before I knew it, the artwork for the book was done. All right, so the next step in the process is usually I would jump into Adobe InDesign, lay out the book, get it all ready to send to a printer but publishers doing that, so I just uploaded all my files and let them handle it. So they compile all the pages into a book, they send it off to a printer, and then we get proofs back that we have to go through and check and make sure there's no more changes or any revisions. At this point, the book is completely done, out of my hands, and now, eight months later, the book is here, it's a real thing, and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I hope this whole process made sense and I hope it helped you get a handle on creating a graphic novel. You know, it's a big undertaking, a lot to think about and a lot of work to do, but I really figured out that if I just take it one step at a time, it's not as daunting and intimidating as I initially thought. So if you have any questions about any of this process or want me to go more in depth on anything, leave a comment for me down below. And if you want to learn more about creating your own comic books, please check out Maker Comics Draw Comic. I'm super, super proud of it. I have a link down in the description below. You can get it straight from me. I'll mail it straight to you. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!